What's up, everybody? It's Howie Spangler of Tales from the Green Room podcast. Uh, if you thought about doing a podcast of your own, um, but you just weren't sure how to do it or where to go, let me tell you about Anchor. It's the easiest way to make a podcast. It's free. It has creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or your computer. Distribution, Anchor's got it covered. You can be heard everywhere from Spotify to Apple Podcasts and many, many more. Uh, you can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. Anchor has everything you need to make a podcast all in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started right now. If you've ever wanted to make a podcast, there's no more excuse to wait. Anchor's got you covered. Go check it out right now. Hello, hello. Happy Monday, everybody. Howie Spangler here. This is episode number 92, Tales from the Green Room. Uh, Just got back from Alaska. Just got home and uh, yeah, that was a brutal flight, dude. Flights, I should say. Three different airplanes. Oh my god, <laughs> it was like it was great. We flew Delta, and it was actually we usually fly Southwest, but uh, we did Delta this time. And nice planes. They're updated. They got the touch screens with the movies and stuff. And, all the power options, you know, like plug in your phone and your whatever. Um, so that was great. Um, but man, yeah, it was like we left at three yesterday and then um, ended up, uh, yeah, so like we, you got to go from Anchorage, fly out of Anchorage, end up in Seattle, and then we had a three hour layover in Seattle, and then. That uh, boarded at like 10 p.m. last night. And then we had to fly to Cincinnati. And we got to Cincinnati. And then that one uh, left at like 7 a.m., I think. And we got we got to BWI at like... Uh, like 10 after 8 this morning or something like that. It was just a long, long day. (laughs) So, um, I know I sound tired. I feel tired. I I didn't really sleep at all. I just kind of like tried to pass out for a little bit. But then like I was at the point like I started getting like restless leg syndrome like Donald did too. Like we're both tall, you know, so like all three flights, man. And the, the last plane was one of those small, like, CRJ, like, very tiny, like, a CRJ 200 or something like that. So, it only had the two seats on each side, and it was, like, significantly shorter and just way smaller. Um, and, I mean, my knees are just buried in the seat in front of me. Um, oh, my God. Like, I love being tall. It's, it's rad, but, man, I try to get the exit row whenever I can. You know, or the very front, but that never happens. Um, but yeah, so I was restless legs. Like I couldn't, I just, oh, I just could not stay still, and my knees are just so sore <laughs> from just being mashed up against the back of the seat. Um, but uh, that's enough of all the the crazy travel part of it. Um, man, we had a good time. We had a really good time. Um, I'll get into that. Uh, the force of habit it has been announced my solo record uh been working on it for a while and i didn't waste any time i just want to get it out it's coming out this friday november 29th black friday everybody um if you want to pre-order it you can at uh, itunes and google play and all that uh it's six bucks yeah it's 5.99 uh i think i think 5.99 um or you can pre-save it as well uh, with the link in my bio at Instagram, Howie Spangler. Um, and it'll take you over there to Instagram. You sign in like like usual. I, I'm sure a lot of you have pre-saved stuff before by now, but very simple process. Uh, I, I use Dist- DistroKid um, for this, and uh, it's a very, very easy uh, thing to do. So hit that link, and please go pre-save if you would. Um, I hope you like it. It's got six tracks. I'm going to be doing um, a track by track for for each song, like an episode for each song um, over the next couple weeks. Just kind of talking about 
you know, the same way I did with Detonate a while back. The, uh, just kind of talking about where the songs came from, like what they're about. Just kind of dig in, you know, go over some of the lyrics and um, the topics, subject matter, things like that. So uh, I had a lot of fun doing it. You know, it was um, I kind of came down to the to the wire there before uh, we had to leave for Alaska. I just wanted to get it done, um, and my fiance was being super patient with me the last few weeks. Um, my kids as well. So like, while well, trying to get it done, they understand you know what I was trying to do. So big thank you to them for supporting and understanding. I was a I was like a troll down here in the studio for weeks trying to get this thing finished but um so yeah six tracks uh i'm excited about it um i hope you all like it it's nice to i hit upload and it's just a good feeling so um more on that later but yeah please pre-save pre-order tell your friends uh the youtube channel is coming along man i'm uh i'm about 800 hours from like 850 hours from uh being qualified for monetization you need a thousand subscribers and i've got 1361 right now so i'm good there and you have to have 4,000 hours of uh of views and um the channel has about 70,000 views total but i've got like just under 3200 hours of views um and it's just incredible you know Thank you all for watching the content, and uh, I'm gonna try to keep doing fun stuff like the tutorials. I want to do more like tutorial stuff with like the the tools that I use, and maybe some cool like you know tech reviews or whatever. I don't know. I just I like a lot of things, so I'm just gonna try a bunch of different stuff to see what, you, see what what works and what doesn't. And um, there's some vlog stuff up there, and I haven't been very good at the vlog stuff lately. It's a lot of work to do that, but making excuses. Don't make excuses, right? Um, and then, uh, yeah, so thank you very much for watching the content. If you haven't checked out any of the stuff yet, just go to uh, Howie Spangler, uh, my YouTube channel, and um, see what I got going on there. Uh, there's a lot of stuff of me lately working on this, this solo record and um, doing some mixing and uh, actually recording. The this, this stuff that you hear on the final product that you're going to hear on Friday is, um, I mean, I, you can go back and watch these videos. It's like I was doing that right then and there. I didn't change anything. I did a bunch of takes right in front of people, so uh, I thought that would be something fun, you know, kind of showing the process. Uh, so thank you all for consuming the content, taking it in. Um, if you if you want to support the podcast, you can go to uh, talesfromthegreenroom.com and hit the support the podcast button, and there's a few options there. Or you can buy some t-shirts uh, over there at uh, howiespangler.com. You can go to the store and check it out. A lot of cool designs. Um, I also have... Uh, some, um, uh, I did the cover art for the fourth, um, the force of habit, uh, the skeleton dude. Um, I, I have that coming out on a t-shirt. So as well, uh, I should be getting those on Wednesday. I need to email the guys that pressed it and make sure I'm getting that. But, um, yeah, just in time for the, that tour with Eric Rock money, which kicks off on Friday as well. So uh, I hope you're going to get tickets for that because that's going to be a fun, fun little run. I, I, I enjoy playing acoustic and uh, Eric's a great dude and it's just going to be, it's going to be a fun time. So, uh, you know, howwespengler.com for tickets. All right. Uh, enough about me. <laughs> um, let's talk about our Alaska trip. And uh, yeah, and also, oh, man, this guy tried to destroy me on Twitter yesterday. We'll talk about it. All right, then. Um, yeah, so really weird how, how Twitter works. Um, so I use DistroKid, uh, like I said earlier, to um, to put my stuff out there, distribute this record. Um, and uh, I got a great price. It was like 32 bucks for uh, two artists. So I could have two different projects if I wanted. Um, unlimited releases uh, per year, right? And that's great because... At like TuneCore, uh, it's, I believe it's $10 for a single and $50 for an album. And that's every year. So, you know, you get a few records, that's full records is like, you know, two or three records be 100, 150 bucks. And then uh, a few singles, you know, you're looking at 20 or 30 bucks and then that adds up, you know, 180, 200 bucks and you're paying that per year. Well, with DistroKid, 
this is um you know it was like 32 or 35 dollars for unlimited releases so it was kind of a no-brainer for me um i definitely think that you need to find the service that's right for you if you're looking to uh for a distributor um there's many out there the cd baby TuneCore, you know but i, I chose i chose distro kid and uh so far so good so i guess we'll see make sure i guess we'll make sure it comes out properly on friday anyway um so distro kid uh they did a tweet they put a tweet out yesterday um when I, and while i was traveling uh and let me pull this up here um basically they were they were saying something to the tune of like oh man it's it's crazy how much music is uploaded to our servers um but it just sounds so bad basically is is i'm i'm kind of paraphrasing but um ah upon trying to search for this um i can see my replies but it looks like they deleted their tweet <laughs> this is interesting um so well um i don't, I don't know if the guys uh the guy that was trying to destroy me I don't know if I can find his thing anymore, but anyway, he was, uh, it was, yeah, it was basically saying like, um, the way I took it was artists should tr always be trying to better themselves and better their, their end result, the, the end product. Um, and you know, I kind of, so that's where I chimed in. I was just like, yeah, you know, you should like, I was, I like to stress, like, leave it to the pros. Like if you, I mean, you usually know when you don't know what you're doing. Like if you jump into something like Pro Tools or Logic, you know, a very popular DAW that you used to record with, um, or or anything. If you're, you know, if you get an Instant Pot <laughs> and you don't cook, you know, it's there's a little bit of a learning curve there. Um, Danielle doesn't go near the Instant Pot. She's like scared of it. But I've I've cooked in it many many times, and I just know how to use it, so I just do it. She doesn't do it, so I stress like leave it to the pros. Like if you you truly don't know what you're doing with this stuff, don't try to make music on it and and release it. Like you should get someone that that knows what they're doing. Obviously, get on the get in the app and and work with it and you know use it. But for, as far as releasing stuff, I mean you want to you want it to sound the best you can so you should know you should be self aware be like okay look i don't know what the hell i'm doing with this i need to find someone that that does know what they're doing and there was a lot of back and forth with um from other artists in this tweet it probably got hundreds of tweets you know by the end of this but um a lot of artists on there and i saw a lot of excuses what i thought were excuses people saying things like um well we can't afford it and you know well there i just we're broke and it's and and i'm like you know i wasn't trying to be a dick or anything i was just like saying like this all sounds like excuses to me like you can't if you if you really want something you find a way to make it happen you know and that's something that i had to learn you know i had to learn that as well like i used to say shit like that you know and i ended up doing this so much that i i got i got good at it i guess and I realized that I look back on old recordings and stuff. And I remember years ago trying to release some songs and I listened back to them. And this was even a while back. Uh, I, I really first got into engineering really back in like 2014, um, trying to learn all this stuff. And I tried really quickly to release stuff, you know, and I was broke back then. And, you know, so I put some stuff out uh, for a little bit. And I ended up pulling it down because it was like it sounded terrible. It was just awful. I had no idea what I was doing. I, I thought it was cool. I didn't know how to use compression. I didn't understand EQ, none of that stuff. Um, but you know what I did? I pulled that shit down and I signed up for lynda.com, like the the three week trials um, on like two different email accounts, you know, um, to get the free trial. And then I, I went on YouTube and I just went all over and just tried to find like the best shit I could. And, um, you know, it's not something you're going to learn in a couple of days. It takes months and years even to to really feel like you you got your head wrapped around it, especially something like compression EQ um, and how to mic things up. And there's there's a whole technique. There's an art to all of this. And 
they say there's no right or wrong way, but I mean, that's, I mean, there is a wrong way to, to like EQ something as far as like the, the, the end sonic quality, you know what I'm saying? Like you don't, you don't want it to be, you can make things too shrill. You can use, you can use way too much compression when you don't mean to, you just don't know how to use the thing, you know? And, um, so I was just sort of chiming in with that stuff, which is what Twitter is. It's basically, you know, it's just a big shit show over there and everybody just sort of chimes in on each other. And, um, I felt a little pushback from a couple of people and well, you know, some people, and I'm, I'm like, dude, I've been doing this for almost 25 years as of next year. I've been through it all and I worked my ass off to make sure that, uh, you know, I worked all these shit jobs to, to put money together, to go make recordings, to go work with people that knew how to do this, who knew how to use Pro Tools and knew how to produce. I knew, you know, I knew what, I knew the sounds I wanted, but I didn't know how to make the sounds that I wanted in my head. So I had to have other people do it for me. That's what you do. You know, you go and you you seek out people to help you uh, achieve the sound that you're trying to get across. Um, and this whole, all this talk about, well, we can't afford it, that's, you know, to me, that's excuses because you can go, you can find some, some way to make some money. Now, someone else chimed in. I just happened to see this when I was looking through just now. Someone said, well, you know, I know a guy that teaches um, a kid in Brazil how to play piano, but he can't afford a piano uh, of his own and he probably never will. Yes. I mean, there are, that it was a great point, you know, and it's not, uh, everybody has a different situation. At the end of the day, we have to work with what we have. Um, but I feel like a lot of people are just lazy, you know, not this kid in Brazil, but there are a lot of people that just lazy and go, well, there's, it's like, it's all the way over there. It's like, well, fucking go get it. Go get it. Get the thing that you want, you know? Um, so maybe it came across uh, a little bit harsh or something. Um, somebody want, somebody said, oh, yeah, that's something that rich people say, you know, like, oh, just, just pay for it. And I was like, dude, I'm not rich. I'm not rich by any stretch. <laughs> I'm not even close to being rich. I just worked really hard for, for the things that I have. And it took me years to to learn everything and, uh, and acquire the gear that I have. I don't have a ton of gear. I just have the gear that I, that I need pretty much the bare minimum, you know? Um, and it was all over time, but I got the stuff because I was driven to, to, to make it happen, you know? And that's the difference between the people that say they want things, but they're not willing to put the work in or do what's necessary. That's the difference. Okay? So, like, again, I don't know if this is coming off. I don't know how this is coming off. I'm kind of tired. I was, I was on a long 15-hour travel day. I just got home, like, two hours ago. You know? So, like, it's just, I don't know. When I see things like that, it's just like, well, then quit. Don't do it. Do something else. You know? I try to be positive with the stuff. I want to, you know, maybe it's a little bit of tough love. Um, I think people need a kick in the butt sometimes, but, um, and I, I definitely don't mean to be a dick because everybody's got their situation, but I just feel like if you want something really bad, you're going to do what you need to do to, to make it happen. Um, so anyway, <laughs> I said something and basically the way I took their, their distro ch- kids initial uh, tweet was that, Hey artists, you know, take some time, stop cutting corners and, make your stuff sound better. And I think it was a tough love kind of kind of tweet, like supposed to be inspiring, but sort of like kind of laying the smack down a little bit, you know, but obviously a bunch of people got upset. But in my head, the people that get upset about, uh, the people that get upset about that tweet, that tweet was for them. So they get defensive. Well, you know, uh, so we can't, and, and the one, and I, I wasn't the only one in there saying these things. Uh, there were other people coming in and saying, yeah, 100%, this is, you know, the truth doesn't care about your feelings. Like, you just have to, you have to do what's necessary, you know? So I, I replied to a lot of people throughout, and I, I, really, it was just, I was just trying to be, you know, positive and, and inspire and push push them, you know, to to make them go, oh, you know, you're right, like, I, I gotta get it, I gotta make it happen, you know? Um, but, uh, man, this one guy, he said something about, um, well, you know, some things are meant to sound 
not good. Uh, you know, be, like the lo-fi stuff that's out. And I was like, I was like, hey man, I think I think what they're saying is like it's not so much about like the style or the sound. It's it's the overall like the quality at the end of the day. Like there's plenty of like lo-fi is meant to sound gritty and sort of like it's ambient, you know, and it's meant to sound sort of dirty and kind of fucked up, but it it also it sonically it just it sounds good everything's level and things were obviously recorded correctly like there was proper gain staging at the beginning in the tracking phase and um they're not overblowing the 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 low end and and you know the the high end's not crazy and cutting your head off things like that that's you know that's what i basically said to this guy i was like yeah i think that i think they more mean this dude his 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 reply to me immediate immediately was something like <laughs> I'll go fuck yourself. Like it was, that was it. It was like, I'll go fuck yourself. You uh, fucking moron or something. Hashtag moron or something like that. And, um, I was like, I was like, Oh, okay. I just, I said, ha Okay. I'll go fuck myself. And he's like, Oh yeah, that, yeah, that's what you do. He just started being like really aggressive and just weird. And I was just like, damn dude. And he kept saying, you, you, uh, what do you call me? He's, uh, he's like, you, uh, something, ah, uh, you dumb fuck, like shit like that. Uh, you have no idea what you're talking about. This is a disgusting tweet. Like, I'm like, damn, dude, <laughs> disgusting tweet. Okay. Um, so he was, and, and I, and we kind of went back and forth a little bit and I was trying to just kind of talk him down. I was like, dude, you're getting way too upset about this. You're getting too angry about or something like that. He said, and then he's like, oh, that's what, that's what happens when you, uh, you, you get all, you think I'm the other party's being angry and you want to withdraw from the conversation. I'm like, so you weren't angry when you told me to go fuck myself after one tweet? Like you weren't angry. He said, you're cussing. You're just cussing at me, getting aggressive. Like you're not angry. Uh, and I was like, all right, man, you know, basically look it, it's got to end somewhere right i can't go back and forth with this guy like i want to have i was like dude you can't you got you can't have a reasonable dis- discourse with someone that you that you don't agree with like you don't have to scream at each other like you don't have to cuss and get crazy um but he was super defensive and i took that as like well the, obviously this tweet was for you you know and i and i said i basically said back to him i was just like all right man this is obviously going nowhere i hope everything's you know working out great for you and your art and that was it you know, like there's no, I'm not going to be like, fuck you, bro. Like uh, that's, what's the point in that? You know, there's nothing, nothing comes from that, but it was obvious that I wasn't going to change his mind and he was just super fucking mad and aggro. And I was just like, I'm not going to, just not going to entertain this anymore. You know? Um, and he's like, Oh, you just want to be the big man and walk away. I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna walk away now. <laughs> like just fucking silly. Um, you know, so people get butthurt, you know, when they hear things like that, when people hear the truth, um, and I'm one of them, you know, I, I, I don't like hearing things sometimes, you know, and I try to work, you know, to the best to my, to the best of my ability and, and, um, make things happen. And sometimes I, sometimes I get lazy, you know, I feel like, oh, I don't feel like doing that right now. And I'll be like, oh, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do this and, you know, cut corners. You can't cut corners in this industry. You just can't do it. And, you know, other people are saying, well, you know, a great song is a great song and it'll transcend. I'm like, dude, like I've heard so many great songs that get snubbed because of the production value. You know, it's like there I've, I've seen radio stations be like, I'd play this, but it just doesn't sound like a radio ready song. You have to be ready at all times. That is, that is the point of this, you know? Um, you know, I thought this, I thought this was going to be about the Alaska trick, the Alaska trip, but now I'm like, (laughs) maybe this is more of a, what the podcast is about. Um, I just feel like you, you, you need to put everything into it. Don't cut corners. It's if you cut corners, it's going to be noticed. People are going to see it, especially industry people, because they know what they, what to listen for. They know what a good song sounds like. I don't care. You can have the best fucking song ever, you know, but if it's not recorded well, it's just not going to get the looks, you know, and there's always the, there's always the one song that, that got away, the one that like made, made it through despite, you know, bad quality or whatever. I'm sure there's something out there that I'm not thinking of that, you know, 
made it to radio or whatever, we got super popular. And it might not have sounded the best, but that's not an excuse to 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 settle for that. I think you need to. Um, I think you definitely need to get out there and put put everything you can into it. And you should know if you don't know how to work Pro Tools or any of these any of this software, or don't understand how a preamp works, you know things like that. You should know that about yourself. You should know like I don't know what the fuck I'm doing right now. And find someone that does. And there's plenty of people, when you, when you say it's too expensive, that's that's not true. Today, it is it has become so, uh, it is significantly less expensive than it was five to ten years ago to make a record. Um, and you, there are plenty of people that will do it for a hundred bucks, you know. They'll mix your song for a hundred bucks. Some will mix it and master it, you know. Um, there's just people that would just want to get their name out there, and there's people that are really good, and they're they're underselling themselves uh, or underpricing themselves, I, I should say, um, because they understand the big picture and they're willing to work with you, you know. So reach out, find people. I get emails a lot lately from bands that um, that are still kind of you know they're baby bands, and and they they understand that they need a good product. So I get people coming to me. You know, and saying, hey, man, what do you charge? And, you know, we'd love to, for you to produce a song for us, things like that. That is the right way to do it. You know, I'm not saying you have to come to me, but, I mean, that'd be great. But, like, go to somebody that you trust, you know. Um, and if you're going to sit there and make excuses, then you just need to get out. I'm sorry. It's just, it's just how it is. If, if, if you're someone that you live in a, in, a, in a poor country that, you know, doesn't, you know, doesn't necessarily have have what we have here in America. I, you know, that it's a different story. It's something that I that obviously I don't know anything about. Um, but uh, I think, but the, these people that were commenting on this tweet, I feel like they were just people that just didn't want to go work extra hours. Go pick up a shift. You know, go bartend some extra hours. That that's what I did, and. You know, I, now I'm able to pay pay bills with my music. You know, it's just, I don't know what else to say about that. So if you're going to get mad about that stuff, then it, this isn't the thing for you, you know? So <laughs> it was, that, was that super harsh? Let me know. Let me know if that was super harsh or, or, or am, I, am I speaking the truth right now? Or am I, out of, am I out of my fucking mind? Am I out of touch with reality? Am I, you know? I don't believe that I am. I think that I've put in the time and put in the work and, you know, I, I learned how to do this. That's another thing is, is that like while you're getting other people to, to record and mix your records for you, which is completely fine, okay, um, I definitely think that you should also be learning the process on your own and you should be working in these DAWs every day and learning how they work. Pick, pick your favorite. Pro Tools, Logic, Studio One, Ableton, whatever it is, and go watch every YouTube video ever made about these these DAWs. Like, there's plenty of courses out there that are do these. There are YouTubers that will put this shit out for free. They put entire courses of how to record and mix a song from start to finish, and they're done really well. There's some bad stuff out there for sure. You know, the really bad, you know, handheld iPhone videos where you know somebody's trying to one handed show you something with a shaky cam. Um, but like, there's some really well produced videos that I took in. There's a guy if you if you're a Logic user, there's a guy, um, Music Tech Help Guy, I think is his uh, his YouTube channel. Um, music Tech Music Tech Help Guy, I believe is what it is. But he does all Logic stuff, and the dude is great. You know, he just shows you how to do everything. Um, there's Recording Revolution. This guy Graham, he does he does great work as well. Shows you how to go from front to back. With uh, he uses Pro Tools. Um, so there's plenty of stuff out there. You just have to be willing to seek it out and take the time and make it happen. You know what I do when I'm at home or when I'm on the road? I don't sit there and, and binge on YouTube videos, uh, 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 Netflix videos, and 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 watching Hulu and stuff and Game of Thrones and shit. I I'm watching YouTube videos and looking up courses and learning how to use compression better and how to you know how to get a better uh, bass sound, things like that. How to how the kick drum and the uh, the bass guitar need to you know work together in a mix, things like that. Like 
you have to be willing to do that. And if you're not, once again, this is not the industry for you. That's just, to me, that, to me that's how I feel. Um, yeah. What, what are you going to do? You're going to sit there and make excuses forever? If you want something, go get it. And that, that just applies to anything. Any creative out there. Woo! Okay. Rant over. <laughs> Rant over. Um, there were there were a lot of people agreeing with me in that in that tweet thread. You know, people saying this is yeah, man, one hundred percent, like absolutely. You know, just that one guy. Damn, he was. I mean, there's a point where it's like you're just being an asshole now. God damn! I literally the guy was just shitting on me from the first tweet and just cussing and just constantly and just trying to like. Ugh, it was so weird. Such a weird exchange. And I never do that on Twitter. I never go on and just start replying to people but the point of twitter is to get involved to get into the community and just just you know say what's up and just get into the mix that's that's what twitter is for if you're if you're trying to grow your twitter um you you need to get in it's basically like uh gary v calls it the uh the water cooler of society it's like it's where everyone goes to just sort of spout things and obviously there's shitheads too but uh, you can really get into some co- cool conversations, you know. Um, so yeah, I tried it yesterday, and yeah, shit went off the rails. Anyway, I don't care. I don't. I'm not. I wasn't like upset about it or anything. It wasn't like it didn't bum me out for the rest of the day. I was I actually kind of felt sad for the guy. <laughs> um, I don't know anybody that knows me that I just want to help and just want to show people that they're this is all possible, you know, and uh, hopefully I don't come off like, you know, pompous. Is that, is that the word or anything like that or cocky, you know? Um, I just, I've I've been through a lot of this and I've done so many things the wrong way to find out the right way. And, uh, this podcast, I created this to sort of mitigate that for, for new artists. Um, so they didn't have to necessarily go through all those things that, that I did. But, uh, you know, it's fun nonetheless. Uh, let's talk about Alaska real, real quick before I get out of here. Um, yeah, Alaska was rad. I want to thank Huck Entertainment for bringing us out and taking care of us and hosting us. And um, I, I had a reindeer burger the other day. Uh, to be honest, I did not know that existed. Um I don't know that I believed a reindeer actually existed. I didn't know that was a thing, maybe. Uh, I feel like maybe like I'd seen a reindeer before at some point in my life. Uh, Not in a movie. But if you were to ask me three days ago, let's go see some reindeer. Like, what? 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 (laughs) <laughs> that that's a thing I don't know there's just you know there's just some things you just don't know about about life I, I don't know weird but uh, so maybe I am a fucking moron like that guy said but anyway I had a reindeer burger because like ah whatever reindeer it sounds fun sounds fun you know I thought it was going to be silly I thought it was going to come with like a like a burger piece of beef with like like a patty with like a like a red nose on it or like a cherry or something like Rudolph oh we're going to eat Rudolph so I ate this reindeer burger and uh and I'm like I'm doing that and I'm like doing the social stuff. I'm not really paying attention to what's being said at the table and there's a bunch of us there. Um finish up, pay pay for the food, go walk to the car. We start cruising down through the town. We stop. I'm like, "Oh, what are we doing?" We get out and we go see a goddamn reindeer. Okay? They have a reindeer right downtown in a cage just kind of walking around minding his own business. And I was like, holy shit, I just had your friend with cheese. Like it was kind of a, kind of a weird situation. Um, so, (laughs) oh man, very, very weird. Um, so that was a first for me, two firsts actually. Um, but, uh, yeah, at first, you know, we got there at like 9.30 at night. It was it was cold, but it wasn't too crazy. It was like in the 40s. Um, it was kind of like here at home. 
Uh, so it was dark. We didn't really see anything, you know, because it was dark. And we went to the hotel and just got settled in. And, uh, you know, after a 15-hour travel day. And uh, the next day, uh, that's when we got up and had lunch. And I had the, had the burger. That was on Saturday. And then we went over, head over to the venue around 2 o'clock to, um, to get loaded in and sound check and all that. Um, and uh, we flew, so we didn't have all our gear. We just brought a few core things that we needed. And um, thanks to the Jeffries for letting us use their kit, their drum kit the other night. And um, everything went over really smooth. I couldn't believe it that we had like 300 people there. Everyone was raging. So many people sing, singing the songs with us. It was just so fun. It was like, it was very punk rock and just like, as an intimate kind of bar. It was like this, this bar called Coots and they had like, it's a legendary place from like the 60s, I guess. And they, they just keep adding uh, rooms to it. So it has all these different bars throughout and like our, there's like an arcade bar and there's something called the, there's a room called the Russia, the Russia room. Uh, because I don't know if you ever looked at a, at a map because I haven't. Alaska is right next to Russia, dude. It's right there. Like the tip, like where we were, we were in the South Bay. So like we weren't anywhere near like the, the Western tip of Alaska, but dude, it's right there. I'm sure if you go to that tip, you can just see Russia from across the water. So that was pretty wild. So like that is this room is covered in Russian memorabilia. And I mean, you could just, you could taste the communism, right? It was just big pictures and like old uniforms and uh, badges and um, swords and all kinds of stuff. It was, it was wild. Um, the bar looked like the Taj Mahal a little bit, like up, up the, each corner of the bar had like a, one of those, you know, that, you know, the Taj Mahal, like the, the architecture they, they have like the, uh, the kind of looks like a top of an ice cream cone. Um, There's probably a better way to explain that, but, uh, and then, uh, yeah, so the, the place was cool and yeah, we, uh, they took care of us. They, they fed us and, um, I did, did a VIP thing. We met like they, they sold out all the, all the VIP stuff. And I, I played like five songs, I think. And, um, then we met with, had like a meet and greet, like hung out with everybody, took pictures and, uh, gave them post signed posters and things like that. And everybody said they had a great time with that. And, um, uh, yeah, then we did the show and yeah, like 300 people just rocking out and it was, it was rad. And then we sold some merch. And by that time, I mean, by the time we went on stage, it was 1115. And so for us, it was, uh, it was like, t- uh, two in the morning, no, three in the morning. Yeah. It was like basically 315 in the morning for us because we were still like lagged, you know, from East coast and you know, we did it, and afterwards I'm at the merch table. We're talking to people, hanging out, but like three different people is like they were like, "You guys are tired." Like you just see it in our faces, especially my face. I, I could tell, man. I was just standing up there. I was just like almost not keeping my eyes open. But uh, um, everybody was really nice and super stoked that we came out, and we were super stoked that they came out. See, this, that's the way this works, man. It's all it's it's uh, reciprocity at its finest. It's it's like one hand washes the other. We put out the tunes we need you to listen to them and in turn you enjoy them and like make them part of your lives and then you come see us do these songs live for you and it's just this really cool like uh dance that's you know between the artist and um the listener it's just so it's so interesting and fun and and uh intimate and uh just very, very thankful that anybody, you know, wants to listen and, and come see us. It's it's amazing. So uh, Alaska was state number 50 for us. We've played all 50 states now in the United States, um, including Hawaii. And uh, I mean, even like Montana and Wyoming and places like that, like the Dakotas, like a lot of places bands don't normally go. We've done all of them at some point in the last almost 14 years now. And it feels like an achievement. It feels like, uh, you know, we put it, it roughly a million miles, maybe more, um, on all six vans that we've owned. And, um, you know, each, each one we're, we're putting a hundred to 200,000, maybe 250, uh, miles on each one, you know, before, you know, running them into the ground, just, just trying to spread this music and meet people. And, um, Alaska was the, the, the last frontier as far as America was concerned. 
So um, thank you to everybody that came out for that. And thank you to everybody that still continues to support our band. We're, we're like, you know, it, it just amazes me every time. Cool, man. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. Uh, the Distro Kid rant was, I don't know, it was a release, I guess. Um, let me know what you thought of that. Uh, do you agree? Do you, do you disagree? Was I too harsh or was I just speaking the truth? You know? Um, in any case, if you're doing if you're doing art, you're doing music, you're writing a book, you're you know you're creating films, go for it. Don't don't stop. Don't try to cut corners. Make your shit the best that you can because you need to stand out. You need to stand out. Get your vision across. Take the extra time. Don't rush the release. Make it make it what you want it to be. You know, and keep learning. Every day should be a school day. I learn every day. I learn something new about recording or mixing or, you know, I just, I just always try to learn how to do this shit better, you know? So, um, everybody have a wonderful day and, uh, force of, the force of habit. My first little solo EP comes out on Friday, uh, 1129 black Friday. Uh, that's the same day I'm kicking off the, the acoustic tour with Eric Rockmani, uh, Kyle Ahern and the John Danka show. Um, John Dank show um, and uh, let me know what you think I hope you guys enjoy it. you can pre-save right now at the, at the link in my bio at Instagram um, you can pre-order as well at iTunes and Google Play um, word alright cool everybody have a wonderful day I'll talk to you soon Tales from the Green Room